Is API testing considered a unit testing or an integration testing? How do you test an API with no database? And finally, what is the difference between sending an API call from the browser and from the client, such as Swagger, Postman, Insomnia, or any other ones? My name is Sergey Kromchenko. I've been rocking the QA world for more than nine years. And today, I would like you guys all to learn how to answer these three tricky questions. So let's get directly into them. So, is API testing considered a unit testing or an integration testing? Well, before you get an answer to this question, please don't forget to give me a big fat thumb up, hit the subscribe button below if you do want to help me to get more people on my channel, and if you do want to help other people to learn answers to these questions. So here's an answer. API testing can be unit testing, and it can also be an integration testing. You might ask why? Because for the QA engineer, engineers, it will mostly be integration testing. Because as a QA engineer, you will open up your famous Postman or Insomnia or Swagger or whatever you want to use, and you will type in the URL of the QA environment, of the staging environment or production environment, and you will type in the full URL and a path, and you will send an API call. And it will go to the server, server will pull the data from the database, and then the database uh, will return the data to the server and server will finally get that data or response to you. So you have testing integration with the server and a database. But if you guys will not use server or a database, if you will simply mock the data and run it on your local, that will be considered a unit testing. That's the way devs do. They just run it on their local, they feed the data, they don't use actual database. They just write it into sim simple JSON files or they use other applications to mock the data that are specifically created for it. Second question, how do you test, a, uh, how do you test an API with no database? mocking data in the way that I've just told you guys. So there are multiple uh, libraries that you can use. There are also, you could simply pull the data from the JSON file or you could write the data into the JSON file. This is called mocking data or using fake data or creating fake data. So this term is heavily used by developers and also sometimes is used by the QA engineers. So if you guys have never heard it before, please make sure to remember it because you will get this uh, question about a mocking data very often during the interviews. And finally, third and a last question. Is there a difference between sending an API from the browser and from a client, such as Postman, Insomnia, Swagger, or any other test API testing client in the world. There is a difference. From the user perspective first, you send APIs from both, right? When you go to the browser, when you hit, when you navigate to registration page, when you type in all of the registration information and you hit enter, you're sending a post request to the database. When you're doing the same thing from the API client, there is a one difference. Uh, when you're sending from the browser, you will have limitations. For example, 12, 12 characters, and this is the UI limitation. When you're sending it from the client, from the API client, you will have no limitations. And then if your browser contains the limitation for 12 characters and the database, uh, not a database, but the server does not, or backend does not contain that. That's kind of the security issue or where it's a missing validation for the backend. So usually they would match the front end and a backend. So you guys could do this. You could use your API client to test if there is missing valid validation on the backend. In a, in a way, it is not on the front end on the front end. So that is a difference. And also, when you guys are using browser, you, you can sometimes use apps that could interrupt the call, like something like a middleman apps. Uh, an example of it would be Charles Proxy or Fiddler. If you guys use those, you could play with the browser or even with your phone app, then you could hit the registration button or send the money button, and then you could stop that request halfway with your, uh, with your proxy tool, such as once again, Charles Proxy or Fiddler, you could change it and then you could click continue button. So this request would go to the server. So pretty much you've sent it from the browser, you stopped it, you've changed it and you let it go. So now if you're using Fiddler or, or Charles Proxy, there will be no difference between the API client testing and the browser testing. 
Now you know answers to these three tricky API interview questions. If you guys would like to learn more or if you have any API related questions, feel free to leave the comment below or if you want to get directly to me, we have an option on our website kamify.com, link to which you can find right in the description below this video where you can request a call back with me or request a call with me. Thank you for joining us. I hope to see you next time and you have an amazing day. Thank <laughs> you.